Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today to learn about transformation at B-Lab and how we've incorporated innovation into our latest project. So I'm Sherry Jordan, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Global Marketing Manager at B-Lab Global. I'll be facilitating today's conversation with colleagues from B-Lab and also one of our digital agencies, Futurist. So before we kick off, um, I'll share a little bit of context. So as you may know, B-Lab is in a moment of evolution. A second public consultation on the draft standards is in full swing, offering what could be a final opportunity for stakeholders, including B Corps, business leaders, consultants and experts to share feedback and help shape the future of B Corp certification. So this is a pivotal but exciting moment for B Lab, a moment of opportunity and new ways of doing things. But admittedly, we still have things to learn. And we're looking outside of our organization to the business community to external partners who excel in their fields to support us in delivering our vision which is future facing standards that raise the bar and best in class tools to drive continuous improvement power inclusive engagement and galvanize business action on the issues that matter most and just a note for the audience here, we'd love to hear from you if you're an organization that's also using technology and innovation to drive impact. You can share your details in the comments. So today we're going to specifically talk about the new digital interactive microsite that we've created for the second public consultation on the latest draft standards. And if you haven't visited it yet, you can find the link below in this event description. But before we do, let's kick off with some intros. So Tom, let's start with you. Please introduce yourself, name, pronouns and role, and share a little bit more about what Futurist does. So um, I um, go by the pronouns he, him. I'm a strategy principal at Futurist. In my role, I advise clients on their digital strategy and then work closely with them to help structure the delivery of new digital products and services. Um, and that means interacting with um, designers, data scientists, tech experts, and bringing teams together, often sort of collaborative between us and our clients' organizations. Um, I also coach and support organizations that build those digital skill sets, um, everything from human centered design, agile software development, and kind of lean startup ways of working. Um, and for those that haven't heard of Futurist, which I'm sure is a few of you, we're um, what we call an outcome focused digital transformation company, which essentially means we help our clients um, more deeply understand the biggest organizational challenges or opportunities they have, and then help them solve them using the power of digital technologies. Um, and as an organization, we share the same view that BHAB holds, that business has a role to play in creating a more positive future. Um, and we're experts in help organizations do that using digital to solve problems, regardless of whether they're around profit, people, or planet. Um, in practice, that could mean anything from helping design and develop new websites, like the one we're talking about today, um, building new products and services. So an app, for example, to help an organization measure the carbon footprint and cost of an electric vehicle versus a petrol vehicle would be a good example. Building tools for energy companies to help them more efficiently manage energy usage. Um, and in particular, more recently, helping all sorts of organizations understand the implications of AI and implement safe um, and effective solutions. Wonderful, thanks Tom. Sounds like Futurist is at the forefront of some really exciting work. Um, next I'm going to ask Sasmita to introduce herself. Thanks Sherry. Hi everyone, I'm Sasmita Kamat. Uh, I use she her pronouns. Um, I am project manager in the standards team at BLAB Global. Um, our team at Vila Global is responsible for creating, managing, and innovating the standards for B Corp certification with guidance and oversight from our uh, numerous governance bodies. Thanks, Sasmita. Yeah, really critical work that your team does, but for a small and mighty team as well. Um, and last but not least, Adam, please share your name, pronouns, and tell us a little bit about your role at Futurist. Uh, yeah, hi, thanks, Sherry. Uh, I'm Adam, I go by he, him. Uh, I'm a full stack developer here at Futurist, which 
kind of basically means I work on anything technology based that I get pointed at. Uh, I've got a background in uh, agile project management and uh, education. So really, I just love collaborating with people on new and exciting challenges. Great. Thank you, Adam. And yeah, I think your love of collaborating definitely shines through. It's been really fun to work with you on this project. Um, and brilliant to have such a breadth of knowledge and expertise on this call with us today. So the reason we're here, the second consultation on B-Lab standards. So let's start at the top and chat a little bit about how we approach this from an innovation standpoint. So my first question is for you, Sasmita. Can you share with us a little bit of context to this approach and why it was important to do things differently for the second consultation? Yeah, sure, sure thing, uh, Sherry. So um, there were many reasons why we uh, took a different approach uh, to the public consultation this time around. So the first was uh, centering user experience. Um, so um, we did a preliminary consultation on the standards in October and November of 2022. And that was a big success where we had uh, more than um, 1,000 respondents and um, about 86% of uh, B Corps felt that the new standards were either attainable or could be attainable in the new, near future. And at the same time, we also heard some feedback that uh, that experience was inaccessible um, as we had served the content uh, uh, in a 100 page uh, PDF uh, with a survey in a separate platform. So users constantly needed to toggle between these two platforms. Uh, so that was one reason. Uh, the second reason is just the sheer volume of content that we were uh, presenting this time around, which called for a different solution. Uh, this time around, the standards are much more comprehensive and detailed, um, and that is intentional. So as you had mentioned in your introduction, Sherry, that this is a pivotal moment for B-Lab in our standards development work, and perhaps the final opportunity for stakeholders to share feedback with us. And so we wanted to share the standards in, in full, uh, like, like we did the last time around, but this time around, it just came with a lot more volume. Uh, and um, in this latest draft of the standards, we are introducing much more context around how the standards apply to different companies based on their size, sector, and geography, uh, as well as visibility into things like specific compliance criteria and implementation guidance and, and much more uh, information. And so all of this would have equated to uh, roughly a 600-page uh, PDF document. Uh, and at the same time, sharing the standards comprehensively is important to ensure that companies have a full understanding of how the proposed new standards would apply to them. So that was the second reason. Um, and finally, we also wanted the ability to create an inclusive um, experience with limited resources. So one example uh, of this is around translation. So B-Lab uh, has a challenge as a nonprofit, as a globally reaching organization uh, in that translation can be uh, expensive and time intensive but at the same time we also have a duty to ensure that our work is um, uh, uh, far-reaching and as inclusive uh, as possible so ensuring a smooth and equitable transition of the b corp community to the new standards is a key pillar of b lab global's theory of change and being able to share the standards in multiple languages is vital to delivering this Great, thanks, Asmita. And so I guess at this point, there was also a recognition that B-Lab wanted to bring in some external experts to help us deliver this solution. And so we went to tend through a tender process and then we selected Futurist as our partner of choice to help bring this work to life. Um, so Tom, at this point, it would be great to hear a little bit more about Futurist's work with B-Lab so far and why you responded to our call for help. So what interested you most about this project? Sure, yeah. So at Futurist, we're on our own journey to creating an organisation that closely aligns with the B-Lab values. Um, we've been doing a lot of work about how we improve the kind of impact of our organisation. And part of that was going through the, the B-Lab impact assessment process and ultimately applying for certification, which is a process I was heavily involved in. And so we got to really get a deep understanding of the work B Lab is doing and the standards and how organisations go about, you know, applying those in, in the real world. And so, when this brief came out and the opportunity came up to apply, we were really keen to 
I guess, take that next step and get more heavily involved with, with B-Lab. And I guess it was a kind of perfect union of our ability to apply, as I've talked about, our kind of digital capabilities around strategy, product design and development to support the movement even further. Um, and as, as you've sort of touched on in particular, in this case, having really close collaboration with an organization who was really engaged and recognized it needed expert support was a great experience. As Adam's going to talk about, and as, as Meta's just mentioned as well, having the ability to also find, you know, really great ways to apply AI-based solutions to real problems was 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 good. So um, yeah, that was personally really interesting. Um, and you know, it's really pleasing to work on a project where you see the end result so quickly. So you know, the fact that the consultation site is now out there, it's delivering on some of those things that as Meta just talked about to help people more easily engage with the standards and hopefully be able to provide feedback um, is cool. Um, and then finally, behind the scenes, which obviously people don't see, the analytics that are being gathered will be a really great way of sort of closing the loop and allowing people to evidence the engagement and the impact of, of this process. So yeah, a really kind of nice project to work on from that perspective. Great, thank you, Tom. Sounds like a perfect partnership, not only in terms of skill sets, but also company values as well. Um, you started to touch on the community and the element of like stakeholders providing feedback with ease a little bit there. Um, so as me too, I know throughout this project, centering user experience has been a huge consideration. And so diving a little deeper here, one of the things that's different in the latest draft of the standards, as you mentioned, is that we're showcasing how the standards will be tailored according to company size and sector. So could you share a little bit more about this and how we've accommodated for this in the new microsite? I believe it's been quite an undertaking um, and I'd like to hear from Tom as well from a UX perspective afterwards. Yeah, sure, sure Shari. Um, uh, so during the preliminary consultation in 2022, we had shared an early version of how the standards could be tailored for different companies. Now, during that consultation, we heard uh, feedback that B Corps and other stakeholders wanted to better understand how the changes to the standards would apply to them very specifically and what would it mean for them in practice. Um, and so to provide this clarity in the latest draft, we have detailed the standards much more, like I shared before, uh, with different requirements and underlying compliance criteria for various sizes and sectors of companies and also other features such as uh, optionality um, in some requirements and, and more tailored guidance and much more. And all this uh, detail meant that there were many different uh, combinations of the standards based on the size and sector of a company that we needed to present during this uh, consultation. Um, and the primary purpose of this consultation is to seek quality feedback from B Corps and aspiring B Corps. And so we wanted to build out the journey to accommodate them and um, allow them to understand the standards and how it would apply to them and their context while still giving, giving them the opportunity to see the rest of the standards if they are curious and, and want to learn more. Uh, and finally, we also needed to um, factor other stakeholders that are not companies uh, and could be um, other standards organizations or you know, uh, academics or other, other stakeholders, perhaps who would prefer seeing the whole set of standards without any um, tailoring and without any filtering of sorts. Yeah, I think that the contextualized content was a key sort of technical challenge for this project. Obviously, there's still a huge amount of text there. And so finding ways to filter that down so it was more relevant to the the, um, the person reviewing the, the, the standards was, was really important for us. And so that's where the introduction of the, the first screens in the, the survey come from. You know, we gather a small number of data points from users so that what they see on later screens is is um, filtered based on their you know type and size of organization and of course in the language that they've selected as well and so futurist and the standards team work really closely to build that functionality in a way that you know works effectively and, and filters down the content to the right sets and of course there was a lot of testing to make sure that worked correctly um, and it hopefully therefore makes it a lot easier for um, organizations to engage and provide relevant feedback based on their type of organization as quickly as possible. Of course, as Mita said, 
you know, B-Lab's keen to hear um, and get feedback from all sorts of stakeholders, but that's really the main target audience is organisations who have or will be going through certification in the near future. Um, and the other big difference from, from the previous consultation, of course, is the fact that the survey sits alongside the, um, the standards now. So whereas before you were having to work in two different places, having the survey in line with the, um, the standards hopefully makes it much easier for people to track where they've provided um, feedback um, and which section it's related to. And all of that's been built um, in an accessible way from a technical perspective. So, you know, all of these things should mean that it's much easier for a, a much bigger audience of people to engage with and provide meaningful feedback to be led on the standards. That's great. Thank you both. And I guess keeping to this theme of user centred experience, I'd love to dig into how we approach translation. So as Sismita mentioned earlier, this is vital to ensuring the success of the consultation and delivering an inclusive process. However, the language of the standards can be really specific and quite specialised. And so the quality of the translation needs to be really high to ensure clarity for stakeholders and those sharing feedback. So Adam, could you share how we approach translation in an innovative way in this project to balance these needs? Yeah, sure. So really, we wanted to create a system that um, that had sort of like this key feature set that editors could instantly request translations uh, and get them back instantly. Uh, they could manually edit them if they need to make any changes, um, and that they could also protect certain phrasing so that um, we would reduce the need for sort of ongoing editing. Um, and then in addition to that, it was really key that they could actually see this content live on the site in any of the languages immediately as well um, before publishing so they knew if there was going to be any issues. So um, elements of sort of AI or automated translation have been around for a while. Like I remember, you know, even as a you know, teenager using like Google Translate to sort of, you know, bodge together some French homework or something. But I'd say only in like recent years um, has stuff started to reach the point where it's feasible to sort of use it as a sort of business sense without it looking really, really bad. And even the, the best stuff on the market isn't probably in a place where it's going to fully replace manual translations. So it's really looking at a combination of the translation or automatically to sort of get things going uh, and then further editing so that we could get the kind of mix of sort of speed, efficiency and accuracy. Um, I think that even if these sort of automatic translation services take another leap forward in quality, copy editing is a really subjective um, thing. And, you know, you'll see two copy editors disagree on, on one piece of copy, let alone something that's coming from AI. So I think that it's always going to be really important that um, it's a human process and that people are involved at some stage to really sort of convey company tone and, you know, capture context as well. Um, one of the sort of like main um, sort of jokes that we had on on the project was that um, when there was like a French translation um, for the board of a company, so a board, it was coming through as cheese board, and it was kind of like one of these sort of like reference points that we knew that we really wanted to avoid. So um, I guess the first thing that we needed to do was actually um, choose from what is quite a broad range of automation um, tools at the moment. Um, so we carried out like a blind test. Um, where we took some of the standards and we ran them through some of the services. And then we distributed these various translations to um, uh, international partners throughout B-Lab. So we had lots of different language speakers providing sort of blind feedback on everything um, and just gave us an idea of sort of what was going to sort of work as closely um, as we needed straight out of the box. Um, and the one that we went with eventually was a service called Deepal. Um, and they've got like an API for us to use so that we could send over text and get um, results back. And one of the, I guess, really key features that it had that we made use of is something called a glossary, um, which is really like a protected, this protected group of terms um, so that we can ensure that certain repeated phrases or certain really, really important um, points always get translated in a specific way. Uh, we avoid any cheese boards coming through, hopefully. Um, and 
as well as sort of like manually editing translations, our editors could also sort of build on this repository of um, protected terms so that going forward, the mistakes get lessened. And, and realistically, what we should see is the quality of translations, um, you know, sort of reaches a, a really high level overall. Um, yeah, I think that's that's it, really. I, I think one of the main other things is that um, building out this system with Deepal and our CMS um, is done in such a way that if we want to add in new languages, it starts to become sort of relatively trivial because the systems are really in place. Um, and with a small amount of work, then we could start introducing additional languages going forward. That's great. That's really interesting approach. Thank you, Adam. And I guess this approach to translation, combining AI with human input, is also going to provide great learnings for future phases of our work as well in this project to evolve our standards. So, for example, we're going to be building out an assessment tool for companies in our B Impact platform, to start measuring and managing their impact. And that will obviously require translation elements too. So more on that coming soon. Um, but on this, I'd like to throw a question back to you, Sasmita. Um, what do you see as some of the ongoing benefits of using a digital platform like this for sh sharing the draft standards and seeking feedback? Yeah, um, so I think uh, firstly, creating such an interactive and digital website uh, for hosting our standards uh, gives us the flexibility to update the standards in the future. Uh, relatively quickly and, and share it with the stakeholders. So it is a future-facing uh, solution. So we could use the tool to house the standards until the, the final product, which we'll call the B-Impact uh, product, uh, until that is ready. Um, it, it will allow uh, audiences to continue to familiarize themselves with the standards and share the standards with, with other people in their team, even after the consultation. So it's a very easy way to access uh, the standards. Um, and as you mentioned, um, there are learning and elements of the build that can be pulled into future products uh, as well that we'll build as an organization. Um, the other thing is that it also ensures that everyone is on the same page uh, at, at any given time and, is, and they are referencing the most uh, up-to-date version of the standards as soon as they are available. So this isn't uh, possible when we share a, a PDF version of the standards because uh, this level of version control is impossible when people are downloading PDFs onto their local computers. Um, and thirdly, um, a digital solution uh, also offers, uh, like Tom shared earlier, uh, many opportunities for insights around uh, user experience. Uh, so things like how are people uh, using our tools? How are they uh, engaged? How much time are they spending on the site? Which pages are they visiting? Are they returning or just visiting once? Uh, what, what are some of the stumbling blocks and, and barriers? So all of this can be um, uh, more easily uh, uh, learned uh, through through a digital platform and, and is just very hard to uh, uh, compare uh, with things like a document format. Thanks, Sasmita. Great point. And at the top of your answer there, you mentioned the importance of having this future facing solution. And on that topic of future facing, I think there's a lot of learnings and improvements that we can take forward from this project. BLAB is a really complex organization, both in structure and governance, but also the topics that we delve into as a standard setter. And we often hear feedback that the language we use could be more accessible, that we use too much jargon. So I'd love to open up a question and ask all of you if you have any thoughts on other ways that we could improve inclusivity even further in our projects, how we can make the standards even more accessible. So would anyone like to kick off? I'm happy to go. Uh, and I'll uh, just echo what Adam uh, said earlier, which is that with this kind of solution, it's easy to, because we have the framework and the architecture already set up, it's easy to, you know, bring new languages in. And I think that's a real um, great uh, win of a project like this, because we hope that some of these learnings could open up opportunities to reach even more audiences and, and create more um, impact as a movement. And with this uh, sort of like 
semi-automated process, we could potentially consider translating in, in more languages in the, in the geographies where our movement is still growing and, you know, uh, there are traditional barriers to uh, using English uh, or, or any of the other four languages of the BI as a, as a language of using the standards. Um, I mentioned also about accessibility. So, uh, you know, as much as possible, the website's been built to be as accessible as possible. And um, but I'm sure there's 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 ways we could always continue to improve and make it more and more accessible. And, and you know, so building on that in future, I think would, would be important while, while we're talking about AI as well. And of course, everyone's talking about generative AI. Um, you know that, that maybe that there would be ways in the future to explore how those types of technologies can help organizations interrogate the standards more and, and take rather than just reading and interpreting themselves have a more kind of interactive um almost conversation with with the standards and with, with BLAP around the implications for their types of organizations so yeah as these technologies mature i think there's all sorts of opportunities to think about how it can be used to help people ultimately understand more about how they make their organizations better and how that aligns with, you know, the, the set of standards that, that, that BLAB has. Yeah, um, and then I guess I can go um, fully developer and say maybe like a dark mode for the site, um, high contrast. We did actually get an, e an email or a tweet, I think, in from someone saying that they were struggling with some of the contrast and the readability. Um, I think it's all fine on on you know like UX standards because our designer was checking it, but yeah, dark mode. Um, I prefer working with a dark screen and and light text. Find it easier to focus on stuff. So, yeah, could be a nice easy win. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, some great ideas to keep in mind there. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. I'm sure many of our listeners will be waiting with anticipation to see what the future holds for B-Lab and Futurists in this journey. I think this feels like a really nice note to end today's conversation on. Um, so thank you, Adam, Susmita, and Tom for sharing all your thoughts. And thanks to those joining us live or watching this recording later on. If you do want to learn more about how Futurists combined AI and human expertise to support the multiple languages efficiently. Um, you can read their recent blog. We'll be adding the link to the description below. And we hope that this conversation has inspired you to think about how you can drive innovation and inclusivity in your projects, even if you are a nonprofit with limited resources. Um, and before we close, one last pitch. I'd love to encourage you, our viewers, to please, if you haven't already, check out the microsite explore the latest draft of the standards and share your feedback before the 26th of March 2024. So thank you again. Keep following BLAB and Futurist on our social channels to learn more about this partnership um, and how we're building platforms for business action. So it's me to Tom and Adam. Thanks again for your time. Have a great day. Cool. Thank you.